Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and we are on to the next tell in the Strickler 8 Sampler uh, Warp and this one is Honeycomb. Now this is uh, draft 21 in the uh, Strickler book chapter 1 which is Twills on a straight draw. And this is actually treadled in a straight draw also. So it's also known as Trump as writ. And so it's a very easy treadling. It's uh, just one through eight over and over. So I don't think I need to use my treadle tracker for that one. But um, the tie up is rather complex. And I'm a little bit confused because the tie up here, and I don't know if you can see this very well, the tie-up has a couple tie-ups that are um, repeated in uh, on different treadles. And I'm not sure why the author did that. Um, I'm hoping that it is not a uh, misprint. If it is, then um, we will be getting something completely different than what we expected. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, go ahead and uh, start weaving it and see what it looks like. It's a little bit challenging to see the um, how it's supposed to look based on uh, the tie up and the treadling because of the fact that they don't give you a drawdown. Um, they only give you a picture of a sample of what the draft looks like um, in a picture format once you've woven the cloth. So um, I guess I'll just go ahead and weave it and we'll see what we get and see if we like it. Uh, I could probably do some research and see if there's some sort of errata um, for the book, but I'm like being, I feel like being lazy. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. You can see that uh, I've put in the divider of the 8-4 cotton here between the two towels, and I have woven my um, hem allowance. I wove 13 picks and then I wove the 14th pick in the same shed. That will be my fold line. And then I wrote, wove the remainder of the uh, 40 picks for the hem allowance. And we'll go ahead and start in on the pattern itself. All right, so uh, we're going to just treadle one through eight and just repeat that over and over. I have my treadles set up in a walking treadle so that um, it's the left foot is doing all the odd treadles, the right foot is doing all the even treadles. That way I can walk back and forth and it is a little bit easier on your body when you do it that way. So, um, again, I'm not sure what it's supposed to look like. So I think I'm going to maybe do a little bit of research and see what uh, everybody else out there says as far as if this should, if there should be an errata for this particular draft. So I did a Google search on Brighton Honeycomb. And I found a whopping one reference to Brighton Honeycomb. 
The reference pointed me to the book Master Weave Structures by Sharon Alderman. Now, I don't have many weaving books, but I do have Master Weave Structures. So I pulled it out and the tie-up was indeed different. But which draft was correct? Strickler's book is a co compilation of many resources and lists and sentence the structure of weaving as the source of the draft. So maybe my copy of Strickler's book was incorrect? I could possibly prove that if I had Sutton's book, but I don't. However, my regional library does have a copy, but not at my local branch. I'd have to request a transfer to my branch, which would take about a week. So while I waited for the library transfer, I decided to tap the hive mind for a honeycomb draft. Get it? Haha. -ha. Pun intended. Um, I posted the question and one of my weaving forums responded with a link to a blog post from June of 2011 about Brighton Honeycomb. According to the author, Brighton Honeycomb is not a very widely discussed uh, draft online or in weaving forums. And I believe that based on my search and lack of results. However, it does appear in several books on eight shaft drafts as an alternative to waffle weave. The problem is most of the drafts are wrong. Well, according to the blog poster, so I wasn't crazy after all. The draft in the Strickler book and Anne Sentence and several other weaving books on eight shaft drafts has been written incorrectly for a Brighton honeycomb. And what I mean by that is it's not really wrong unless you're expecting something different. There is a pattern in the January, February 2020 issue of Handwoven Magazine that uses the Strickler draft number 21, which is Brighton Honeycomb. A friend on my weaving forum was weaving it and she was getting exactly what the magazine pattern showed and it looked fine. So it wasn't technically wrong, but if the pattern is claiming it's Brighton Honeycomb, which has a specific definition based on the Alderman book, then it is wrong. So what is the specific definition? So the Brighton Honeycomb needs a multiple of four shafts with a minimum of eight shafts. So eight shafts, 12 shafts, 16, 20, and so forth. Let's look at the eight shaft version because that's what I'm weaving. The basis of the tie up is a single diagonal from the bottom left to the top right. This is crossed by a double diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Oops, I got one too many. And I'm putting X's in here, but this is really written for a rising shed uh, loom. Now we're going to fill in the blank spaces between these diagonals with crosses. In a 12 shaft version and higher, you would get diamonds, but the eight shaft version is simpler and you only get crosses. So we're going to make crosses here to include these two uh, cells also. So there's one cross. We're going to do another one over here to include this side of the double diagonal. And you'll notice that these two crosses are offset from each other. Now, we're going to create a cross here, but with this cross, the bottom of the cross gets wrapped around to the top of the tie-up. And then we will create 
across here and the top of this cross gets wrapped to the bottom of the tie up here. Now, if you look at this, there are crosses here, 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 with it wrapping over to here. This one is here, wrapping over to here. You have a cross here, wrapping over to here. And you have a cross here that wraps over to here. I might have said that one already. Uh, did we get that one? Yes. Okay, so now you have all of your crosses accounted for, and that is a true Brighton honeycomb. The problem with the book, with the draft in Carol Strickler's book, is the wraparound here is missing and the wraparound here is missing. So it leaves these uh, floats here and here that show up as, I don't know, the author of the blog post says that it looks like moth-eaten cloth. But you can see here in my friend's weaving that this purple here is the original tie-up and you can see the blocks of the weft color and it doesn't look bad it looks fine and that's what the pattern called for however she wanted to change it to a true brighton honeycomb so she changed the tie up and switched to the green and now you can see the definite uh, single diagonal going, and this one actually is uh, shifted from left to right, it's going le right to left, but that's okay. Uh, and then you can see the double diagonal going this way. And then she's got her little crosses um, all over. And it just, to me, looks more organized. Um, this, the purple is not wrong. It's just not a Brighton honeycomb. Um, this is a true Brighton honeycomb. I'm curious to see if when she washes this, what kind of shrinkage she'll get and if it will be different from the true Brighton Honeycomb. So she said that she's going to wash it tomorrow and post some more pictures, so I will be curious to see how that comes out. So I took the time to redo the tie-up with the correct version, and now I can proceed with weaving. I'll definitely make notes in my, in my version of the Strickler book, and hopefully this video will someday help some poor other weaver who's trying to figure out what they should be weaving.
So now we're finished with the cream on white version of the Brighton Honeycomb. And I really like the look of it. It looks very elegant. I'm thinking that it will probably shrink up a bit since it's an alternative to waffle weave. And as I was weaving this though, I kept thinking, what if I used a silver or a gold weft thread or a dark color so you can see the structure better? I have some silver tinsel that I might experiment with and I might try the red 8-2 Cotillin I have. So much weaving, so little warp left. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something like I did. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Watch for the next video, which will be number six, and the structure is called Breaks and Recesses. Thanks for watching and happy weaving.